Wow. Isn't it amazing to consider how far we've come in just one year here in El Salvador? It's, uh, okay, bring, let's bring up the uh, chairs, guys. Panel, chairs, rocking and rolling. Um, imagine your life a year ago when you were learning about what El Salvador was taking the brave risk of doing, being the leader, adopting Bitcoin, creating this as legal tender. What a bold move, right? And so you think about what's going to happen next year, and the year after, and the year after. How many more hearts and lives are going to be touched? This is okay. Um, and so how has your life changed because of Bitcoin? I want you all to think for just a minute. Who orange-pilled you? Who was your person or people or event, your aha moment? Think about that person. Think about that unsung hero that, that Garrison was talking about. You are the unsung heroes. You are the people out there doing this most needed work. And you're going to be touching other people, maybe because you had a conversation, maybe because you wrote a post, maybe because you did an article. Greg Foss last year, uh, or this year actually at Miami, it was so exciting because he was up there being just like, use your voice. Do not be shy. Okay, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have a platform of a million people. You don't have to have uh, all this you know, notoriety. Use your voice for good. You are only here once on this planet as the divine you. So make your voice heard because as we light each other up with the voices within Bitcoin, the network grows stronger, our hearts grow stronger, and possibility for the future for our children continues to grow stronger. So. I am super excited to introduce to you Peter Young. I don't know if you guys uh, have heard of Peter Young. He is the managing director at the Free Cities Foundation. And so they are on a mission to kind of like a citadel creation. So I want to welcome Peter up to the stage. Let's go Peter Young. And we are going to be talking about the progress of Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador. Welcome Peter and his panel. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. It's a delight to be back here at the Adopting Bitcoin conference. Uh, last year's Adopting Bitcoin was my first ever visit to El Salvador. Uh, I'm not someone who's been into Bitcoin uh, since the very beginning, but it's been a huge part of my life since 2017. And that first visit to a country that actually adopted uh, Bitcoin as legal tender was a really uh, special experience. And I'm delighted to be back here today uh, with uh, this amazing group of panelists to discuss how the adoption uh, of Bitcoin is progressing here in the country. So 14 months ago, what? Bitcoin became legal tender in, in El Salvador, and that was a huge event uh, for people in this, in this community. So what we want to try and cover in this panel is really two things. Firstly, in those 14 months since Bitcoin was declared legal tender, how has the adoption of Bitcoin, so the use of Bitcoin by merchants, the use of it as a savings vehicle, uh, the use of it by uh, everyday people or institutions in the country, how has that progressed in the last 14 months? And then secondly, we want to talk about how we can accelerate Bitcoin adoption further. So I'm, I'm joined today by uh, four panelists. We've got Stina Leland of BitRefill, uh, Guillermo Contreras of Ditto Banks, uh, we have Tristan Toma of Alpha Point and Will Hernandez of Paxful. Hola. So I would like to open up uh, with the first question, which is how is Bitcoin adoption progressing in El Salvador? How far along uh, have we come uh, since the start of that, uh, of that legal tender law? So feel free to answer that using any metric that you think is important. It could be merchant adoption. It could be financial integration. Would anyone like to start me off with an answer to that question? Sure, Christian. well, I'll start. Uh, and as a brief introduction, my name again is Tristan Toma. Uh, I'm the director of product for AlphaPoint, and AlphaPoint now powers the core of the Chivo wallet. So um, we, al we also power the integrations with all of the partners and providers that um, are part of the Chivo wallet ecosystem. 
Um, we didn't initially launch the Chivo wallet, but we work closely with all of the partners and we've taken a more significant role in the Chivo wallet core technology since around New Year's of this year. And there's a big announcement uh, you know, with the government and we're still working closely with all of the partners on a very uh, beneficial, actually a, a good terms um, with the whole ecosystem. One of the things that we've seen in particular from AlphaPoint's perspective is you know, with the launch, unfortunately, there were a tremendous amount of people that wanted to see it fail. <laughs> that without knowing anything, uh, you know, just basically posted whatever they wanted to. Um, I've, we've had fun, fun conversations with, with our partners about kind of uh, media attention around that. And what we've seen in particular in the past months is that the users that are on Chivo the users that are using it are actually using it more. And particularly from AlphaPoint's perspective, that's a tremendous accomplishment. Because the people that overcame the FUD, people that overcame the media, and overcame you know, the, the roadblocks and, and you know, stumbling blocks in the road, which were honestly almost inevitable, given the timeline that technology had to run on, um, we see that people are noticing the improvement of the reliability uh, of the technology itself and of the wallet. And so, once again, um, from the perspective of executing transactions, trades, um, we see the ratio of actual successful, uh, you know, trades in general from a macro scale um, increasing because we've had the ability to learn from the past year. The launch itself, everybody from the technology side can agree was, was very aggressive and you know we've had the opportunity to learn over the past 14 months and become more stable, more reliable, have better inter integrations with our partners, more integrations with also the legacy financial systems which has been critical. You know our, our integrations with the banks are more are stronger, more reliable, more comprehensive, increase in ATMs, increase in credit card integrations, so we see that as, as a really critical metric of the reliability and the adoption of Bitcoin via the Chiba wallet. And just a quick follow up on that. So you mentioned that people are using Chivo more. Do you have a kind of metric to gauge like how much more they're using it? What, what kind of stat are you referring to there when you say it's being used more? Yeah, unfortunately, um, I, I can't speak on behalf of Chivo. Um, we, we are the technology providers for Chivo, so AlphaPoint white labels exchange and payments software all over the world. We, have, we power dozens of exchanges um, and our clients have the discretion to, to share their metrics. Unfortunately, I, I can't share on their behalf. What I can share and something that has been shared publicly already by them is that you know, we've, seen, uh, we've seen an increase in use and for me that's, that's the most critical uh, metric is that people, if it, you know, if it just continues to have bugs or whatever, then people would inevitably not use it. The people that have overcome the FUD that have used it are using it more. If you use it this month, if you haven't used, if you're Salvadorian here and you used Chuba Wallet, you know, sometime in the past and it had a bug, you know, this is tech, it happens. <laughs> um, try it again. It's become more reliable, and people that have tried it again and seen it have, seen, have noticed that. Right. Okay, does anyone want to come in there? Um, I can come in. Uh, my name is Tina. I'm the CEO at the company called Bitrefill. Um, in terms of like general adoption in the country, to share some numbers, there is research from the university that is showing that 28% of the population has a wallet. Uh, and 21% of the population has done a Bitcoin transaction at some point. Uh, at Bitrefill, uh, we've had tens of thousands of customers use our platform to send hundreds and thousands of transactions. Uh, and um, so that says something about uh, the current adoption. Uh, but also something that we see is that as the in some of the initial, ex initial excitement is uh, dying down, uh, there is a long way to go and a lot of work that needs to be done in order to get to mass adoption, right? We're still in the early phase uh, of this. Okay, thank you. Hello, well, uh, my name is Will Hernandez and I'm from Paxil. I'm the director for LATAM for Paxil. 
And regarding the Bitcoin adoption, you guys have to go ahead and give yourself an applause because Bitcoin adoption started because of you being here as well. So you being in a second conference here creates that need of learning about Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador. So that is something that you guys have to do for you. And welcome to El Salvador. So applause for you. Applause for, for you. Really, seriously, uh, I know next year is going to be bigger. So that's Bitcoin adoption. So one of the things that I want to say is like uh, for Paxful, we gave a, a gift, La Casa del Bitcoin for Education, and, and it, is, it was a free, completely free uh, for education for all the, uh, uh, just because El Salvador became legal tender. So one of the things that we learn about that, it is that giving that to El Salvador made us progress in education, and this is what we need, you know? Why? Because there's so many products coming into the country, and we need to teach our population in El Salvador for adoption about the different products that, for example, Bid Refill, Dito Banks, Chivo, Paxful, we're creating, and many more. You know, sometimes people, they do not know how to use the Atena ATM. So you got to go and you got to take them and teach them and grab them from the hand. And so this is something very important that we have to do. And you guys that are here, uh, you got to watch about, like, learn about this because a uh, high tech in Bitcoin is going to be a, one of the things that are going to progress really really into, in, into the system. So that's what we have done. Okay. So the next question I wanted to ask was to Guillermo, and it relates to the nature of the way people are using Bitcoin. There's been a debate for years, long before El Salvador adopted Bitcoin, regarding what the most effective way is to get people to use Bitcoin, for Bitcoin to achieve mass adoption. And some people have said that the best way of doing it is to work in uh, making it into a, a means of payment. Some people say that Bitcoin is a store of value. And there were lots of different predictions about what would happen in El Salvador when there was this, like, uh, this, this law that made it legal tender. And so I wanted to ask Guillermo, like, given your experience uh, on the ground in El Salvador, what are the main use cases of Bitcoin? What are everyday people and businesses operating here using Bitcoin for primarily? Perfect, thank you. My name is Guillermo Contreras. I'm founder and CEO of Dito Banks. We are the first Bitcoin neobank for uh, Dune Bank in El Salvador, and we have been on the ground since day one. And I am also representing Bitcoin Cluster from El Salvador, and it is very important to mention that there are right now 65 companies operating in El Salvador, and we have uh, a lot of visibility of what, uh, of what each company is doing. So to answer your question, and uh, what is people doing with Bitcoin right now? Uh, one of the things that um, we started seeing right from the beginning was uh, people seeing Bitcoin as a trading mechanism. And we started educating, uh, La Casa del Bitcoin has done a great job doing that, Mi Primer Bitcoin as well, about teaching people that it is not only for trading, that it is a store of value and it is a financial rail. And that's the main purpose of what we are doing right now. Um, what we are trying to, to achieve is that people start seeing the benefits of, of using Bitcoin as, as their main financial rail before seeing it as a store of value. Uh, what we want is that they understand that using Bitcoin for remittances, for example, allows them to have them uh, immediately, uh, no cost, peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, uh, and start spending their money right away. That's one of the main purposes that we are trying to achieve. Um, the second thing is uh, for freelancers or um, people that work for platforms like Uber or, or Pedidos Ya, um, they have also had uh, historically a lot of problems for receiving their, their wages. So now, right now with Bitcoin, they are able to do it instantly and start spending it. So I will say that probably uh, those are the two main ways that people is using it now. 
And well, of course, we are still seeing a lot of, of usage of Bitcoin for trading. Okay, thank you, Tristan. I can actually I can echo that because I think one of the one of the very unique positions that Chivo and, and Alpha Point provides in this ecosystem is a fully integrated kind of um, financial tool. I I don't think it's it's really ever been done to the extent that Chivo has achieved of integrating. Bitcoin and Lightning along with, in one kind of seamless ecosystem, along with every national bank integration. And every, I mean, the ATMs, as he had mentioned, ATMs all over the country to use cash in and out, as well as credit cards, you know, to use credit cards in either purchasing Bitcoin or, or, or you know, getting into the ecosystem. And having all of those put together uh, especially at the scale that Chivo works is has never been seen before, has never been done before. Um, when we see people, for example, you know, you go to Super Selectos and you want to buy something in Bitcoin, you can do that on Bitcoin, you can do that on Lightning. Um, we see a lot of people using, if, if you have Chivo, you know there's like an auto convert function, which we're very, you know, pr proud to power that. And what happens is basically if somebody wants to use a, a, a dollar, you know, they want to send somebody Chivo dollars, you know, for, I don't know, they're buying a, a bottle of water, and the person wants to receive it in Bitcoin, you can actually auto-convert it, and it does a spot exchange, there's no fees, there's, it's, I want my money in Bitcoin. And sometimes for merchants, you know, uh, we see, we see merchants that want to receive and be more involved in the crypto ecosystem, but they have their, you know, their cogs, their cost of goods that they have to account for and make sure that they want, you know, to to either push things through to their bank account or, you know, have things denominated in dollars. And we've made that ecosystem, we've made the Bitcoin ecosystem open and available for that. If they want to settle in dollars, they can receive Bitcoin, they can receive Lightning and settle in dollars, and then they can trade it. And a lot of people we see on Chivo as well, because there's no fee, you know, you can, you can trade back and forth, and we see a lot of activity in that as well. Thanks. Does anyone else want to come in on that, on that question? Um, we, I can just share a little bit from Bitrefill on, like, uh, on use cases. Um, Another, another way of like uh, spending Bitcoin that we see a lot is like young tech savvy uh, people who are s uh, spending their Bitcoins on games and entertainment uh, and so forth. So that's, uh, that's a big use case. Uh, and uh, it's important to mention that in order to, um, to achieve a true like Bitcoin circular economy, we need all, all of these things. You need to be able to spend your, spend your Bitcoins, you need to be able to earn them, you need to be able to save them, to take loans, and, and all of the things that comes with having, having an actual circular economy, right? Yeah, I think that's really important. Um, one of the other kind of major use cases that we were discussing uh, when we met yesterday was the remittance market. And I'd be really curious to hear whether anyone's got any insights into how um, Bitcoin is impacting that market and how that shifted over the past year. It's uh, uh, based on uh, research. Uh, it is very low. It's like around 2% of remittances that are sent are uh, through Bitcoin. Um, generally, it's hard for um, El Salvadorians in the US, for example, to use Strike or Cash App because you have to KYC to use those, uh, those tools, and maybe not everybody has the ability to KYC. Uh, but I think maybe, uh, Tristan, yeah. you have some insights on this. Yeah, that I mean, exciting. One, of the, one of the original value propositions of Chivo was to, uh, and is, thankfully, to enable remittances and, and payments all over the world for any Salvadoran. So, I mean, the, a fundamental premise on, of Chivo is that every Salvadorian has access to it. We've made it free to use in everywhere in the country. So we've, we've collaborated with all the telecom providers so that it doesn't use your data, for example. We've, uh, we've made the app available on, on all of the international you know, um, application stores so that somebody in Germany, in the US, and really anywhere can download it. They can use their Salvadoran passport or their Salvadoran DUI and go through KYC because they're Salvadoran. 
and they can send money seamlessly if they want to send it through Chivo. You know, it's immediate and easy. And if they want to send it through any other rails to a Chivo wallet or from a Chivo wallet, we've ensured the interoperability with all, all of the other, um, you know, all the other wallets. And so we do see a healthy amount of money going from Chivo to Chivo or Chivo to, you know, Bitcoin Beach or Paxful of, you know, internationals that are, that are not on, you know, Salvadorian soil that are sending money and doing transactions every day. Uh, following what uh, Tristan was saying is that, for example, what we are doing as companies here, we, we provide the integrations and also uh, the solutions for the different ecosystems of each company to connect, right? For example, like Chivo, you, you, you have to go and you can on-ramp on Chivo with cash and then in an ATM and then you go ahead and you can put it, that Bitcoin into any Lightning wallet. So there's many use cases. Uh, going back, it's not only remittance, but uh, there's many use cases. As Paxful, uh, we are a marketplace. We, we teach people how to make money uh, in the marketplace, in a peer-to-peer -peer market. You know, a global solution, we have 10 million users. But it's not about that. It's about how they manage their Bitcoin, how they manage uh, their relationship with different companies and how uh, we, need to, we need to teach people that Bitcoin has different use cases. Uh, so this is something that it is helpful when companies get integrated and you know, there's communication between them. I would like to add something else. I know that uh, we're gonna get into it, but uh, two of the biggest challenges that we have right now is that some of the early adopters are underage population. And one of the things that we are struggling right now is that they are not able to, to get on board, for example, into, into Chivo Wallet. So we are right now trying to find uh, some clever ways of, of how, to, how, to, how to allow them to start transacting in Bitcoin. And the second one is KYC, mostly in the States. Uh, what do you do if you want to buy Bitcoin and, and send it to your relative in, in, in another country, in El Salvador? without uh, going through KYC because many of our, um, many of, of, of the population that we have in the States, they don't have documents. They, they are very afraid of providing their name or their address to, 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 to send remittances. So one of the solutions for that um, is something that we have been working on for the, for the last couple of months and it is the scratchable gift cards. These are piece of, piece of papers, cards, just like Netflix uh, prepaid cards or Spotify prepaid cards that you can buy at any store in the States and that you can scratch the codes and then you can send over WhatsApp or over the phone or, or an email the code to your relative in another country so they can redeem it and convert it in cash. And I think that's, that's a couple of solutions that we need to start seeing in order to keep uh, creating adoption uh, for remittances and for many other usages. Okay, thank you. So we've heard there about the different ways in which people are starting to use Bitcoin in El Salvador, and uh, we've heard some encouraging things like the, the fact that Chivo is being used more frequently uh, uh, than it was a year ago. I now want to turn a bit more to uh, the future and how we can uh, encourage more adoption in the future. And what I want to do is ask each of the panelists, I know this is a kind of multifaceted thing, there are many different things that need to be done if Bitcoin is to become truly integrated into the, into the lives of people in this country. But maybe each of you could highlight one single thing that you think it should be a priority for say the next two to three years in El Salvador. You know, should we be focusing on uh, raising awareness or are there technical solutions that need to be implemented? Um, so what would your key thing be that you, you think we, we need to work on as a Bitcoin community to support adoption? I would like to go first, if you allow me. I would say business cases that represent real benefits for, for the users. Not only having Bitcoin, they need to understand that there are real benefits, like in remittances, like being able to receive that money instantly without going through an intermediary with low cost, fees and everything, um, those are real benefits and we, we need to, to understand and discover more business cases where the user uh, feels a, a real sense of value of using Bitcoin. I mean, 
they don't even need to know that they are using Bitcoin on, on, on the background. They need to feel that benefit, and that is going to cause, in my opinion, uh, mass adoption of, of the tools based on Bitcoin. Can you give like a really simple example of what a business use case might be that people that we could work to in, uh, implement? Yeah, well, definitely remittances is, is one. And other one, for example, is being able to receive loans based on the money that they are receiving through their wallets. And well, that, that's, that's a huge driver, by the way. And there are, for example, um, benefits for saving in Bitcoin, like cashback or a couple more things. But there is still a lot more to, to discover around that. OK, thank you. Well, uh, for Bitcoin adoption to go ahead and go into effect, like one of the things in the future, what we do, <clears throat> what we need to do is like everything is a payment method. So in Paxful, we add payment methods all, all year long, uh, just because that's the only way that people can actually do peer-to-peer -peer and, and education. But we have to focus on education and we have to focus on educating the media so they do not do fake media against Bitcoin. And this is something that we all have to do. So uh, things that are uh, like very targeted and precise, what we did was, you know, we invited in La Casa del Bitcoin the uh, press people uh, from the media. And because if there is ignorance, they attack Bitcoin. And we don't want that, period. We don't want that. We don't want ignorance. So one of the things that we have to do is educate the media so they can ask the right questions. And this is something that we all have to do. And not only in El Salvador, we have to do it all over, OK? But we have experienced that because, of course, there's a position and everything against Bitcoin here in the government. But listen, this is a project. It's no longer a project. It's actually, you know, have changed people's lives in El Salvador. So we just have to take care of those people that Bitcoin have changed their lives, and we have to teach the newbies how they can go ahead and adopt Bitcoin. You go. Uh, okay, I can go, I can go next. Uh, I totally agree with the, with the need for education, that we, we need to educate people on how uh, Bitcoin and how the solutions work. But uh, coupled with that, I also see that uh, there is a need uh, to work on on the UX uh, of the solutions that we are presenting to these people. Uh, in this room, we are a bunch of tech-savvy, highly literate uh, people who are super excited about the technology, right? Uh, if we go and talk to the average El Salvadorian on the street, they're not going to care about the technology. They're going to care about that the solution uh, is fast and it's safe and it's easy. Uh, and they can understand it, right? Uh, so an application that was built for an early adopt adopter Bitcoin uh, community on a, on a global scale uh, is not going to work for the man on the street who has never even heard about what Bitcoin is. Uh, and this is a challenge that we need to work on in the coming years uh, so that um, we have solutions that are uh, ready for mass ad adoption uh, of people. I think very much to, uh, I think all three of your points, um, Alpha Point, our, our focus, uh, I think in the next year, and, and one of the things that we strongly believe will help make Bitcoin use nationally more uh, easy and encouraged is additional integrations with all of the you know, financial institutions. So you know, supporting education-based uh, programs, supporting, you know, traditional finance and integration, things like that. Um, from our perspective, once again, we, we are in a unique position because we already integrate with the legacy financial systems. And that has been a key point in, in you know, making Chivo use and making Bitcoin use across the country easy and, and natural. Uh, to the extent that people still need to <laughs> learn how to use it, um, what we see coming in the next year are additional integrations, additional tools for people to use Bitcoin like they use dollars, use Bitcoin like they use, you know, really any other financial instrument and deepen our integration 
of ease of use with traditional financial systems. I agree with Tristan that uh, integration with the legacy financial system is, is key. We need to bring, we, need, we still need to bring more banks to integrate with Bitcoin companies. And one good example of, of that is what we have been doing uh, from, from Dito Banks, which is partnering with MasterCard. We are about to issue the, the first Bitcoin MasterCard prepaid card in, in El Salvador, and it's going to be the first one in, in Central America. Thank you. Thank but, you. Uh, but you didn't do it with a Bank of El Salvador, right? No, we didn't, unfortunately. But that, that's what I'm saying. We, we still need to, to keep working on building that bridge between banking system, traditional banking system, and the new financial system of the future, which is Bitcoin. Bravo. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bravo, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we've heard a really... We've heard a really nice array of, uh, of things there that we can focus on to support Bitcoin adoption. So more solutions for business, um, more education, including the media, um, improving user experience. That's one of the things that I often get when I ask Salvadorian people when I travel around, like what's stopping you using Bitcoin? They say it's kind of too complicated. That's the general phrase uh, that I get. And if we can improve the user experience, then that's, um, that's something I think will have a really big impact. Um, yeah, there, cool. There's something I want to add to it in, in just kind of mentioning this improvement in user experience that we see it is also happening organically over time in that, you know, before, uh, well, at the, at the time of launch, and, and I don't know the, the most updated metrics, but at the time of launch, it was around 30% of the country had a, had a traditional bank account. And now around 90% of the country has a Chivo account has opened a Chivo account. And so we, we see there are more Bitcoin accounts than bank accounts in the country. And what has come along with that is, you know, the, the amount of people that have never experienced any digital finance before, they're also the most susceptible to fraud and phishing and scams and things like this. And so, you know, there's, there's been, you know, experiences of that that the population has very unfortunately and painfully been hit by. And you know, we see this and social engineering is a funny thing that tech kind of sometimes has a hard time with. Um, you know, we can't really do everything to any, I mean, it can never be stopped. It can never be totally stamped out. And I know that the Chivo team works tirelessly and you know, we do our part to, to prevent fraud. And the population itself is starting to learn that when, you know, Traditionally, when somebody takes money out of my hand, I know I'm getting stolen from. But when, I, when you know, the, the president of Chivo calls me, oh, wow, you want to help me get 50 more dollars in my Chivo account? That's awesome. I'll give you all my details. You know, it's also population education of, you know, I can now be stolen from virtually, digitally. And part of that education, we hate to say it, but takes time. So, you know, as people start to get more familiar with what it is to have digital finance, we start to become digitally literate. And the population itself becomes empowered in, you know, maybe I won't give my, my passcode or my key or my codes to people that I don't know and that I don't trust. And so over the next year, the population, and it has actually decreased, right? From the very beginning, there was a crazy amount of, you know, attacks and scams and everything like that. And that's decreased partially because, you know, we've learned to preempt them. Um, but also the population itself is, is starting to understand more and more. Thank you. Um, so you, you kind of mentioned there uh, the, the relationship between uh, Bitcoin and the traditional financial system and how it's like Chivo is sort of bridging that gap by making it easy to switch between US dollars and Bitcoin. And I want to focus a little bit now on the, that integration and how that can happen in practice. Because one of the things that I've been learning more about is just how hard it is to move beyond the legacy system uh, for, for like, institutions here. I've had some conversations with financial institutions in El Salvador and asked them, you know, Bitcoin's now legal tender. Why aren't you fully integrating Bitcoin into your operations? Why aren't banks putting Bitcoin uh, on their balance sheets? Why aren't they adding fully Bitcoin-compatible services? 
And the answer I quite often get is, bec is because of the way it might be perceived by their US dollar uh, partners, the partners that work on the US dollar side of their business that allow them to integrate with the global economy. And one of the attractive things, or one of the things we often say about Bitcoin is that uh, it will grow uh, because it has this monetary network effect. And obviously, with the US dollar, it's got this such a large network that even if you come up with a different monetary system like Bitcoin, uh, it's going to take a long, long time for that to supplant what exists already. Um, and so I've, I've heard a lot of personal caution from financial institutions about integrating Bitcoin into what they're doing, even though it's now legal tender. So my question to the panel would be, what do we think um, the financial system, financial institutions can do to bridge that gap between Bitcoin and the US dollar more effectively? <laughs> it's a tough question. It, yeah, it's a <laughs> tough question. Um, probably the answer is not what they can do in order to integrate. I think that responsibility is in our side. Um, we need to still, uh, we, need, we need to create stronger mechanisms, stronger, uh, I don't want to say the word regulation, I want to say the proper supervision of what is going on in, in, in our industry because that's what that makes the, the, the banking industry to stop working with us. So it is our responsibility to build stronger systems so that they can trust us for, for integrations. I think this, this is also, again, one of, one of our primary focuses. Um, we see, uh, you know, the, the title of the panel is, is Adoption Progress Over the Year, and Alpha Point has been approached, and we are approaching countries all over the world that want to create their own system, either reflective or from the inspiration of what has done, been done in El Salvador. And I mean, the, the representatives that we're in conversation with, we definitely, if you're watching this and you work with a, you know, any institution or government body that is in a conversation about what it means very practically to implement blockchain, to, to integrate Bitcoin in legacy systems and along with legacy systems, that's the conversation that that we want very much to be part of, and we have seen, and we are in conversations with, honestly, <laughs> very, very often, on what it's gonna look like for the next one, two, three, four, five countries that adopt Bitcoin. And I think the indications from, you know, if you've seen the video of the one person dancing in a crowd, and they're kinda like dancing by themselves, this, you know, when the second one comes on, when the third one comes on, and they're dancing together, then you, you have a party. And we're, we're going to make a Bitcoin party out of the, you know, with the world and in the world. And we support those conversations of what it's going to look like. It's, there's, a, there's a chance it'll look like Chivo. And there's a chance it'll look like some other structure, some other thing. And so as we see the next few countries come online, Indications will be set, will be taken from that, possibly back to El Salvador, and then very much so for the next country. So we're we're starting this kind of movement of this is actually you know it's real and it's doable. We've proven that it's doable to have both of you know fiat assets and crypto and Bitcoin side by side in even the same system. So the next country that will do that will have their own interpretation of what it looks like to have fiat and Bitcoin next to each other, fiat and crypto next to each other. And because AlphaPoint is at its core an exchange, we facilitate the exchange between all assets, right? We want to make it interoperable, integratable with Bitcoin and, you know, any other asset that makes it easier to have, uh, you know, regulatory guidelines and regulatory clarity and understanding so that it can be used, so we can get these systems online. Thank you very much. Yeah, well. yeah I, <clears throat> no, uh, I believe uh, smart, a smart regulation is needed. Uh, one of the things that that's why we created, uh, you know, the cluster of Bitcoin and blockchain so that we can have a table in messages of the regulations that are going to be happening. So, of course, definitely 
you know, the banks are part of the system, part of the economic system, but, you know, Bitcoin is right now in El Salvador part of their system. So they will have to deal with, uh, with that all over. So uh, we need to sit at the table where regulation is done and, you know, we just we have a voice there. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we've got two minutes left, and the final thing I wanted to ask this, the panel is what the international community can be doing to support Bitcoin adoption. We've talked quite a lot about the situation here in El Salvador, but many people here have come from different parts of the world to attend this conference. So perhaps each of you could give me a, a 30 second answer to that question. What is it that you think the international community can do to support El Salvador to increase the pace of Bitcoin adoption? And I'll start here and go down. So. Um, I would say that, you know, from Alpha Point, again, we want to, we want to work with uh, industrial leaders, national leaders. There are already leaders representing probably a billion people that we're in conversation with. And we want to invite more of those conversations. You know, there, there are very few, if only, you know, a, a handful of companies that have done this on a national scale. And so I would welcome more conversations of that nature. And, and we've seen a lot of encouraging uh, inquiry around it and development around it. So we want to you know, just make sure to, to create reliable and trustworthy systems. Well, education, business models, better UX takes money, a lot of money. So I will say that what could the international community do in order to support what we are doing? Is to gather up, create more venture funds, more venture capital, angel investors that could directly support all the companies that are doing this, not only in El Salvador, around the world, because it takes a lot of money to go through regulation, to educate hundreds of, 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 of people. It's, is, is very costly, so money is definitely what uh, international community could still do for El Salvador. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I really agree with you on that, uh, on, the, on the investor front, that we need to see even more uh, VC and so forth uh, for, for this, uh, this industry. And uh, also, you can all help in different ways on the education front. Um, and uh, and if if you want to want to help on on the UX and user experience front, we're hiring at Bitterfield, so come to me, apply for a job. Well, just the international community, they just uh, one of the things that we believe is that they need to keep on building. We need to keep on building the ecosystem. We need to keep on building with UX, provide the products that are easy for the people of El Salvador, because you're asking of El Salvador, but it's, that's a global need. So uh, just keep on building. Uh, one of the things also that we need to do is bring venture capitalists to El Salvador as well. Well, here, uh, you know, the work that uh, Max and Stacey are doing in El Salvador is, is, is great with El Sonte Capital, you know, uh, supporting uh, Bitcoin companies. So. That's what we need. We need the international community to keep on building. Okay, thank you, Will. And on that note, I want to thank our panelists for sharing their insights on Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador. <laughs> and thank you all for listening. We hope you have a great rest of your conference. I'll hand back over to Valerie. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Gracias. Bienvenidos a El Salvador. All right, guys, let's rock and roll. Where's the music, guys? We need some good high vibes here. Hold on. Don't forget your phone, someone's phone. Phone, 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 phone. I don't know whose phone that is. <laughs>